Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I'll be making another light painting tool. This will have a few things in common with a light stick that I made about two years ago and which is a programmable tool for making light patterns. I made a two-part series about it and you should see the links to this on the top right hand corner of the screen. This new tool will be made up of a controller and a few light plates with wires that can be connected and disconnected between them. If you've watched the series on the light stick, you'll see that the handle contains an Arduino board which controls the light patterns, as well as a battery holder and an on-off switch, and then a rod which has an LED strip stuck to it. This LED strip has 60 LEDs which are addressable and which can produce any colour you want. By addressable, I mean each LED can be controlled individually. I'm going to use the handle for the light stick as a starting point for the design of the control box. This will house an Arduino Nano board, four AA size batteries, an on-off switch and a socket for connecting to the light plates. One of the use cases for this tool is that I would mount the controller and the light plate or plates onto the spokes on the front wheel of my bicycle and then when I cycle around the yard or wherever, have the camera on a tripod with a long exposure on, I can generate pictures with interesting light trails. I started by putting forms together with Lego bricks, roughly similar in shape to the controller and light plates, that will fit in between the spokes on the bicycle wheel. Once I was happy with the form, I set about designing and modelling the controller and light plates on Blender, which is an open source 3D modelling program. When I was happy with the design, I exported the model to STL format, which 3D printers will accept. Here are the 3D printed parts for the controller. I decided to model it in pieces so that I can be sure that there won't be any problems with 3D printing, including but not limited to overhangs. I can glue these pieces together myself. You'll also notice that for the holes on the controller shell there is a Y formation. The reason for this is to provide some support for the layers above the holes while the outer shell is being formed. I can cut out these holes myself. And here are the 3D printed parts for the LED strips. They are just about long enough to hold 14 LEDs and I can fit them onto the bicycle wheel. I suppose I was aiming to avoid the number 13 and I felt that 12 LEDs would probably be too few. With that, let's start putting it together.
This is the audio jack socket of the type I'm using for connection of the control box to the plates and between the plates. It would normally be used to enable connection of an external speaker, for example headphones, to an audio system. This simple diagram shows how one of these sockets is wired. On the right is the wiring from the amplifier or other source of the audio signal and then on the left is wiring to any speakers that are built into the sound system. When there's no audio plug in the socket, the current or signal would come from the amp straight through the socket and then onto the built-in speakers. But when you insert a plug into the socket, the current or signal is diverted out to the external speaker and nothing goes to the built-in speakers. Here's how this arrangement works with no plug inserted. 
There is contact between both sides of the socket to each pole, but when you insert a plug, the contact between the two sides is broken and instead is to the sleeve, ring and tip of the plug and then out to the exter external speaker. I use this combination of audio, jack and socket in this project because I was looking for a relatively simple and reliable way of connecting the control box and plates and this ticks all the boxes. However, I initially thought that it didn't matter which pins you connect the wires to but on testing I found that something wasn't working and after going through a long process of elimination I realised only the pins on one side of the socket will make contact with the plug when inserted. Here is a close up of the socket with no plug inserted. There is contact between the pins on one side to the pins on the other side. However, with the plug inserted, these contacts are broken and you can just about see the pins on the near side as seen in this picture do not contact the conductors on the plug. Much to my surprise, I didn't see any mention of this in the technical literature in relation to this audio jack. I know now. What I've just shown you is just a couple of examples of the images and effects that you can create with a light painting tool containing LEDs. Apart from your imagination, you're limited by the amount of memory in the programmable device, in this case the Arduino Nano Every, the smallest form factor among Arduino's programmable boards. I used a light stick that I made about two years ago as a starting point for the design of this project using the Arduino Nano Every and four AA size batteries because this design was for the most part successful and I felt that there was no need to make any more than minimal changes. The most notable change being the addition of a socket in the control box to wire to plates holding the LED strips instead of a hard wiring to an LED strip. If I was to make another light, pla light painting set like it, I guess one thing I would probably do differently is use jack sockets and plugs smaller than the 6.35mm that I did use. Looking at them now, I'd be inclined to think that they're a bit on the big side. If I knew then what I, knew, what I know now, I'd use 3.5mm sockets and plugs, and they would be just as capable of carrying the electrical loads as the 6.35mm so sockets and plugs. I wouldn't consider myself an expert when it comes to soldering, especially when soldering wires onto the ends of the LED strips, and keeping the solder only where you want it, for example, not letting it spread to adjacent header pins. It probably doesn't help that I don't have a whole lot of experience with soldering. At least I didn't burn myself with the soldering iron at any stage. Here's where I'm going to end this video. You should head over to my Flickr page where you'll see plenty of images I've taken down the years falling into what you could call a mixed bag of genres. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Anyway, thanks for taking the time to watch and hopefully I'll see you all again in the next one.